Hello and welcome to another in our series of online technical seminars. My name is Ashley Heath and today I'm going to review the general principles behind primer and probe design for quantitative PCR or qPCR reactions. In this slide we have listed the major factors to take into consideration as you approach your assay design. The physical parameters of the primers and probes are perhaps the key to successful assay design, and we shall examine those in more detail shortly. Other factors to take into consideration include the nature of the target that you intend to amplify, for example, whether or not there are any structural difficulties or regions of high variability, whether or not your primers and probes show cross homology to unwanted targets, the exon intron structure of the target, and finally, what types of reporter and or quencher molecules you need to place on the probes. The most common format for qPCR that you are likely to encounter is the 5' nuclease assay, which relies upon the use of dual labeled hydrolysis probes. And we'll look at that assay in a little more detail in the next couple of slides. In the first line of this slide is shown the structure of a dual labeled fluorescent probe. The 5' prime end of the probe has a fluorescent reporter group attached to it, and the 3' prime end of the probe has a quenching molecule. In line 2, you can see the probe binding to its complementary target in your amplicon of interest. And in line 3, the primers, the PCR primers themselves, also begin to anneal to the target. Finally, as the TAC polymerase extends your amplicon from the 3' prime end of the forward primer in this, such, this slide, it simultaneously cleaves the 5' prime fluorescent group from the probe due to its inherent nuclease activity. That fluorescent group is then released into the reaction mixture where light can be measured in a quantitative fashion. You'll note that the quenching molecule, shown here as the blue Q, is now placed no, is no longer placed close enough to the fluorescent group to effectively quench the reaction. A number of desirable physical parameters should be met as closely as possible when designing primers and probes for a fly prime nuclease reaction. And the most important of these are, are listed here. Perhaps though the key parameter for a hydrolysis probe is to ensure that the probe melting temperature is around 7 to 10 degrees centigrade higher than the melting temperature of the primer pair. This is to allow ample opportunity for the probe to hybridize to its complementary target before the primer pair itself hybridizes, thus ensuring that the probe is in place for subsequent hydrolysis and release of the fluorescent signal. The target itself may cause complications when choosing the positions for your primers and probes. In the real world, DNA is not linear but tends to fold and form secondary structures, as can be seen in this example taken from a short stretch of the human Europlakin 2 gene. As you want to avoid placing primers and probes directly over these regions that show strong loops, an analysis of the structure is necessary before finalizing your design. One extremely useful tool for carrying out such an analysis is mFold. You can find mfold at the link shown at the bottom of the slide. As you can see here in this picture taken from the mfold out, output for UPK2, there are loops between bases from about 30 to 50, 100 to 140, 180 to 200, and you want to not place your primers and probes so that they wrap around these looped regions, but rather try to find other structures, regions in the gene that are more linear. As we know, many eukaryotic genes are divided into both expressed and non-expressed segments. If you're interested in looking at genomic DNA, then assays might well be designed within intronic regions of the gene, such as are shown in the very first part of the slide here. Typically for gene expression studies though, one would prefer to avoid any signal from genomic DNA that might contaminate your preparation. So it is preferable to design primers and probes against the transcript in the absence of any intronic sequences. This may be accomplished in many cases by picking a primer or probe that bridges an exon-exon boundary. Okay. 
Finally, once you have decided upon a good probe sequence based upon the various considerations that we have discussed, it is time to move on to the choice of 5' prime reporter and 3' prime quencher molecules. Firstly, the emission spectrum of the reporter molecule should match the detection characteristics of your qPCR system. Secondly, the 3' prime quencher must be matched itself to the 5' prime reporter. The table shown in this slide contains a number of the most popular reporter and quencher combinations that are available from Sigma Custom products. The list is by no means exhaustive and there are a number of other possible combinations available. Finally, if you need help with your primer and probe design, we are always more than happy to assist. You can contact us online at www.sigma.com slash design my probe. There you'll find two options. We have an online design interface where you can perform the design by yourself. And we also have experts that you can call for a consultative, uh, collaborative um, primer and probe design. That concludes this presentation. We thank you for taking your time to listen to us, and we hope that you will take advantage of the other online seminars and presentations that Sigma has to offer.